Hi everybody, I'm Stephanie Mojica, book development coach and book editor. And today I want to talk about five questions to ask your book editor. So book editing, as I think I've said on several other videos, depending on what platform you're watching this on, is something you don't want to avoid, save money on, etc. But I will say that don't necessarily judge the quality of an editor by the price. This is not an area in which you want to bargain shop or try to get like the Ferrari. Because just because somebody's charging, say, $150 and somebody else is charging $10,000, it doesn't really say much about their skills. But what you do need to find out, especially if you're quoted in a specially low price, is what exactly are they using to edit your book? That's the first question. Are they literally going to read every word of your book multiple times? You want an editor who is not going to rely on Grammarly, although some of the unscrupulous ones are not going to admit this to you, but just ask some questions and listen out carefully. Also, you want to find out what is their experience education. You don't necessarily have needed to have gone to school to be an editor. I didn't, although I did go to school for writing, philosophy, law, and other subjects. But I did work with a professor in college who was uh, a poet, so I was his editor. He taught me a lot about editing. I was a newspaper journalist for 17 years, grew up around authors, etc. So I've been editing and writing since a young age. But you just want to find out how did they learn their skills. And again, they don't necessarily have to have ever had a job where it says they're an editor. Another thing you want to find out is what type of editing do they do? And if they're just saying, oh, I edit, or oh, I proofread, and not explain further, this is a possible red flag. So good editors know there's different types of editing. There's developmental editing, also called content editing. That's useful for many writers, although it's definitely a more expensive service. So a developmental content editor is going to go through and they're not only going to check your typos, your grammar, your spelling, your word usage, your consistency, like are you spelling out six in some parts and using the numeral six in others. They're going to see what's missing in this story. And that can apply to fiction and nonfiction. Is there something wrong with the character development? You know, are there, is the setting like inconsistent? So a developmental content editor is going to give you a lot of feedback about what else you need to do with that book. A copy editor deals more with the grammar, the sentence structure, the word usage, etc. A proofreader is going to check the typos, inconsistencies, misspellings, and the like. I, as a book editor, do all three. I will say that I lean more toward the copy editing and proofreading. But that's not because I can't do developmental editing. It's just usually when people find out that it's fairly costly, they don't want to do it. And, you know, that, that's cool. But you definitely don't want to skimp on copy editing and proofreading, especially if you're self-publishing, because you are the final say-so on when that book goes to print and how it goes to print. And even if you're a great writer, you can't trust your own eyes. I use editors for some of my longer work because you get married to that and you can't necessarily see the mistakes that you're making and the inconsistencies. So it's definitely not something to skimp on. So another thing you want to find out is what is the cost? So some editors charge by the hour. I prefer to charge by the word slash project. Others will also want a percentage of book sales. I don't do that. I don't think that's fair, but that is a choice that some editors make. You definitely want to get the cost and everything laid out in a contract. Some people do it, you know, in an email. If you're hiring them on Upwork or another site, there's going to be a system for that. I use a system called Hello Bonsai where I send proposals and contracts. And generally, you're going to want to pay 50% up front and 50% to end of the project. That's how I and a lot of editors do it. There are some that will only work for 100% up front. I would just be very careful with that, especially if you don't know that person, because again, I don't want you to get paranoid, but there are people out there who aren't who they say they are, so just be careful. Always get everything in writing, whether that's an email or a formal contract. 
Another thing you want to find out is what's the turnaround time. Again, this should be spelled out in your contract, informal agreement, whatever you're using. And a good editor is going to stick to that deadline. But if, if for some reason the editor gets into it and it turns out to be a little more work than they initially thought, give them some grace unless you think they're making excuses. As a journalist for 17 years, I never miss deadlines, even if I have to do an all-nighter. But things do happen. But again, just get that turnaround time. And then in your mind, for your planning, add a couple weeks to that. Because you're going to want to go through it as well once they return the edits to you. And make sure you're happy with the final product before you send it to your book formatter for digital and print and the like. So I hope that this video has been helpful to you. You know, these five questions to ask your book editor, especially for paying a dime. If you're interested in having me editing um, and proofreading your book, you can reach out to me. You can send a DM. You can drop a comment. Uh, this is originally Facebook Live. I'll be dropping a link to my discovery session scheduler on here, on Instagram and Twitter, where this will be posted. You can check my link tree. And on other sites like YouTube and LinkedIn, I'll also post that calendar link. And I would love to edit your book. I've been doing it for over 24 years hundreds of thrilled people, and I hope you have an awesome day.